Hi, I'm Alex Lee from UC Berkeley, and I will be talking about how to do Gaussian release space planning for articulated robots in the presence of obstacles. The motivation of this work is that we want to perform reliable operation of articulated robots that have noisy motion dynamics and noisy sensors. Release space planning, which is about planning under motion and sensing uncertainty, can be formalized as a PUMDP. However, PUMDPs are intractable in general, and the recent line of work has been focusing on computing locally optimal solutions to the PUMDP problem. Consider this toy problem introduced by Plot et al. We have a point robot, and we wish to find a plan from start to goal. The initial configuration is uncertain, and the circle around the start indicates the uncertainty of the robot. Fortunately, the robot can gather measurements of its position to localize itself better, but those measurements have some noise which varies quadratically in the horizontal direction. The level of brightness of the grayscale background indicates the level of noise of the observations, with the lighter region being the region with smaller noise than the darker region. For this task, what will a state space planner do? A state space planner will go directly from start to goal, ignoring any sensor measurements. Notice that under this plan, the robot reaches the goal with a larger uncertainty than the one it started with. If instead of planning in state space, we plan in belief space, the robot will go to the right, to the light region first in order to localize itself better, and then return to the left to reach the goal. Notice that in this case, the robot is able to reach the goal with a smaller uncertainty than the one it started with. Trajectory optimization can be used to find locally optimal solutions to the Gaussian belief space planning problem. The variables in the optimization consist of the belief of the state and the control for all time steps, where the belief consists of a mean and a covariance matrix. The optimization problem minimizes some cost objectives depending on the belief and controls such that for all time steps, the common filter updates for the belief are satisfied, the robot reaches the goal, and the controls are feasible. This optimization problem is non-convex, but we can find a locally optimal solution using sequential quadratic programming. As we have set up the problem so far, we haven't yet accounted for obstacles. In order to deal with obstacles, we need to consider collisions between the robot and obstacles. However, the state is uncertain. Previous work formulated the collision avoidance as cost, but only works for point and spherical robots, and here is why. Consider a two-dimensional point robot. Its belief state is described by this Gaussian distribution. Consider a counter of this distribution, which is an ellipse around the mean. For the case of a point robot, the probabilistic collision avoidance constraint can be formulated as a collision avoidance constraint with respect to the ellipse. Now, consider our two degrees of freedom articulated planar arm, where its state is given by its two joint angles. Its release state is described by this Gaussian distribution. In this case, how do you formulate the probabilistic collision avoidance constraint? Consider the sigma points lying on the lambda standard deviation counter of the uncertainty covariance. The first sigma point is the mean, and this is the respected robot configuration. For the second sigma point, we get the following robot configuration. We repeat, we repeat the same for the remaining sigma points. Then, the convex hull of the first link for the five robot configurations given by the five sigma points is what we call the sigma hole of the first link. Similarly, the convex hole of the second link for the five configurations is the sigma hole for the second link. So, we define sigma hole as the convex hole of a robot link transformed according to the sigma points. Consider the sign distance between these sigma holes for all links and time sets and obstacles. We do convex-convex collision detection, which calculates the sign distance between pairs of convex shapes using the GJK and EPA algorithms. These algorithms compute the sign distance of convex holes efficiently. In particular, the sigma holes are never explicitly computed. Now, the probabilistic collision avoidance constraint is that the sign distance between sigma holes and obstacles is about some safety distance four sigma holes of all links at all time steps and for all obstacles. 
The figure illustrates an obstacle and a single hole for different sign distances. For our problem to be feasible, we want the cases in the green region. Notice that the sign distance constraints is not convex, so we linearize it. Fortunately, analytical gradients for the sign distance with respect to the belief can be computed. The probabilistic condition avoidance constraint presented thus far doesn't take into account that the sigma holes in between time steps might be colliding with obstacles. To deal with this, we can have a continuous collision avoidance constraint in a probabilistic sense. For this constraint, we can construct the convex hole between sigma holes of consecutive time steps and consider the sign distance between this convex hole and the obstacles to be greater than or equal to some safety distance. Four sigma holes of all lengths at all time steps and for all obstacles. The advantages of using this constraint is that the solutions will be collision-free in between time steps and that the discretized trajectory can be discretized less finely. Now, let's go back to the optimization problem presented earlier. For the probabilistic collision avoidance constraint, we can now have that the sign distance between sigma holes and obstacles are greater than or equal to some safety distance. In addition, we can do model predictive control during execution, in which we replan at every time step, and at every time step, we update the belief state based on the actual observation rather than the maximum likelihood observation. Given that we can replan sufficiently fast, this is an effective feedback controller. Now, consider this example in which we run an algorithm. In here, we have a four degrees of freedom robot that has some initial state, and the robot's goal is for its end effector to reach the target position in between the obstacles. The robot's initial state, dynamics, and sensing are noisy, and the robot can localize its end effector position better when it is near the line label as X sensing. For this task, what will a state space planner do? If we plan in state space, we will get a trajectory where the end effector goes directly from start to goal and the robot ignores any observations that it could have done near the sensing region. If we instead plan in belief space, the robot will realize that it could localize its end effector better near the sensing region, so the end effector will first move to the left, and then move to the right to reach the target. Notice in here that the convex shapes around the links at the last time steps are the, are the respective sigma holes, and these sigma holes are not in collisions with the obstacles. When we construct the sigma holes, we choose a parameter lambda that describes the multiple of standard deviations that we want to consider for the sigma points. In this case, lambda was equal to 1. Let's now take a look at what we get when we scale up lambda to 4. In here, the sigma holes are bigger because we consider a multiple of four standard deviations for the sigma points. For our experiment, we consider three belief space planning approaches. We executed the nominal belief space planning open loop. We used a feedback linear policy around the means of the nominal belief space plan. In particular, we used a linear quadratic Gaussian controller. And we used replanning, which is the MPC paradigm. We tried the three approaches for 100 simula simulated executions for various and parameters. With replanning in belief space, the mean distance is 0.2 units from the target, which is a considerable improvement over execution of locally optimal state space trajectory and over open loop execution of belief space trajectories. In addition, we also trial algorithm for higher degrees of freedom articulated robots. Similar to the previous example, we want the end effect to go from the bottom right to the target pose which is at the top right. The robot has better sensing of the end effector position at the left side. Notice that in the state space trajectory, the robot ignores any sensor measurements that it could do, but in belief space trajectory, the robot end effector first goes to the left to sense itself better, and then goes to the right. Notice that the belief space plan is a 35-dimensional problem, and our implementation took about eight seconds to compute a solution. An extension we are considering is to plan in our center environments. Also, as we saw in this talk and as has been shown in earlier work on Gaussian belief space planning, Gaussians, 
while limited, have proven surprisingly effective. Still, for problems where uncertainty is not unimodal, they wouldn't be the right fit, but a mixture of Gaussian's model could be. Also, we want to execute belief space trajectories in a physical robot, like the Raven surgical robot. In conclusion, we are able to do Gaussian belief space planning using efficient trajectory optimization, we were able to formulate a probabilistic collision avoidance constraint using the sign distance between sigma holes of robot links and obstacles. Also, notice that the sigma holes didn't have to be explicitly computed, so our method is very efficient and we use fast convex convex collision detection and analytical gradients. Thank you.